I've been making music on Game Boys for like about 10 years. Um, and for me, it's always been a live performance art. Trying to capture some of that energy of the live performance. On a recording, I was brainstorming what I might do. And I remembered a friend of mine has an all analog studio up in Castle, Maine, outside of Melbourne. And they generally do bands and bluegrass acts, sometimes just like a single ribbon mic in a room. So when I gave him a call to see if he was interested in, in recording some Game Boys, he immediately said yes. The software that I use is Little Sound DJ, and it's basically uh, just a piece of software for, for writing original music on the Nintendo Game Boy. Uh, it gives you access to the four channels, which is uh, two pulse channels, a wave channel, and a noise channel. A lot of these tracks were written for two Game Boys, so that's eight channels, which matches up with the eight-track tape, but a Game Boy only has a single headphone output. So I had to think of a way to synchronize multiple Game Boys so that uh, each Game Boy had two different tracks, one panned hard left, one panned hard right. So I've got, yeah, I know, dude. A analog sync input-output. So I've got mm. a bunch of link cables. This is Master Clock Game Boy, not running any audio. And then I've got each one of these splitting a stereo output, left and right, different channels, so uh, we've got a whole bunch of mono tracks and they're making little noises out of their speakers. <laughs> Recording in an analog studio, the process of actually tracking to tape was, was really quite creative and we were able to make choices about each sound on the way in, in terms of what texture we wanted to add in terms of preamps or EQ. That's good, that's, that's, that's fine. So why don't we run these two into this valve unit here just to see what happens. Yeah. Let's do that. So it's a 50s pull tech design. But it's not by pull tech, is it? <clears throat> no, it's a reverse engineered essentially, a clone. At least the mic amp stage is a pull tech stage. The EQ is kind of a custom thing that the person who made it developed. Wow, is it so, British or where is it from? Um, well, it was made in New Zealand. A guy named Ekadek, he makes great custom built audio boxes. And he'll actually build you anything. So if he modded this desk, he built this and he made that compressor. Yeah, right. So he's your go-to. He's good. <laughs> If I put it on microphone, it's clipping extra. So, because they were designed for um, ribbon microphones back in the day, there's yeah, like 20 yeah. dB of gain before you even start turning this knob. So that's with that's into the microphone input. So all that kind of raspy top end just gets more crazy. Is that good? Yeah. The studio itself kind of changes your, your whole creative process and how you hear your song. Uh, it got to the point when we were committing down to tape that I was actually changing uh, elements of the song at the Game Boy level. This is great, but it's a really time consuming yeah, process. And a low. Yeah. Cool. Do you have a name for the project yet, Alex? For the whole. Is there a name of the EP? There, there is, in fact. Do you know what it it is, is uh, you're better at this than you think. Except I can't fit that on my <laughs> No, it's fine. It's an acronym. So what's your role in today's uh, uh, the little bit executive of producer? That's fine. Exec prod. <laughs> Nice. It's so close to my face right now. <laughs> so as Alex had been writing these tracks, he'd been sending them to me and I'd been quite involved in the process. Um, and Alex and I have a very similar taste in music. I knew where he wanted to go with this album and the sound he wanted. So he brought me along as an extra set of ears to help him and give opinions and, you know, help him out when he couldn't figure out how LSDJ worked. 
it, but I do realise that there was one part that there is something on channel eight. Oh no! Mm -hmm. Punch it in. Just we have the technology. Yeah. So where where does it start? Yeah, you go ready. Select B, and then you can do that. Oh right, 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 right. Yeah, 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 yeah. It'll start both. Yes. Go again. <laughs> Pro tips. This is why you're here, isn't it? Yeah. So select and B. Select and B, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then, no, I know exactly. Yeah, what yeah. You mean. And then you press B yeah. to get out of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I'm just going to play it from here and tell me if you think it's about right. Yeah. I reckon it's there. Hey. Is that a good spot? Do you want to do it again? I've always loved super gritty, crunchy sounds from the Game Boy. It, it has this real kind of raw but harsh distorted sound and being able to use amps and, and things like that that have real kind of crunchy but analog sound. I just love the sound of things breaking. <laughs> basically and there's this one particular old gun amplifier which is a new zealand company that was in there and we just crank some dirty synth sounds into it and the sound of the top end just fucking dying as as the game boy is just fucking blasting through them <laughs> breaking up. Like that bit is normally not that broken. Sounds oh, really good, but I just don't think it is fit. Uh, you could, you could have it. I just don't think it's gonna fit in the mix. It will. It'll fit. Do you want to hear that? Will it be triggered by you here in a human way? So it might not be at exactly the same time? Yeah, yeah. So it won't be better. synced. Yeah, yeah. So if it's slightly off, it'll be It'll chorusy. be. Yeah, yeah. Mm. <laughs> Unfortunately, in the lead up to the session, I'd actually broken my ankle. So my leg was in a full cast. Uh, and this meant that I kind of had to master the art of hopping around either up to the mixing desk or out to the live room, back into the studio. Direct hard left and the room hard right, but the amped one, the dirtier one, yeah. in the middle somewhere. In the middle, yeah, and yeah. I still think to be able to mic something like that up and, and get it on the record is amazing. And it definitely adds this element of looking around and seeing what's available, and that itself becomes this new kind of part of the record. Show us your batteries, show us your batteries. Dirty. I'm pretty sure that one looks older Ooh. than the others, doesn't it? Dude, you should want me to get some Duracells from the supermarket. <laughs> you can I'm feeling, I'm feeling dirty looking at that. <laughs> Let, let's, let's see how this goes. It's super heavy duty though. It's, look at that, look at that amount of LED that we got there. Alright, so my final stereo is going to be coming into this sidecar thing. What's that sound like? Is that not right? That's definitely not right. Wow. Oh, hang on. Whoa. Data's super corrupted. Okay, yeah, reload. <laughs> oh, What's your transpose at? Say your transpose back to zero. Why'd that happen? Having five Game Boys in a studio, it kind of seemed like sometimes we had five times the amount of problems. Some of them were super weird things that, that took a little bit of working out. Others were unexpected, but in a kind of good way, and they actually ended up on the recording. Well, it's not supposed to end with that pitch at the end. But, well, that's pretty uh, good. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. Was yeah, that was, that was analog sync. Yeah. Right. Just, yeah. Fucking first take, done. Yeah. I love it. You're like, yeah, first take. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> no, but good. I, well yeah. done, everybody. Played well. That was great. Played everyone well. did a great job. <laughs> then you just inserted something else. I mean, this is able for some of it's I would say, let's try starting that bass. Try there. starting that where it, yeah, roughly where it was. Um, and the others have probably changed. Potentially quite considerably. Yeah, so I actually might just bring. Do you want to make everything else Unity for now? Or like. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, make just put them all somewhere. There is no marking. So. Yeah. One of the main philosophies of, of Alex's studio is the fact that you have no distractions from mixing and listening. So there's no screens or unnecessary markings on the mixing console. You kind of just set your faders and then listen and feel your way through a mix, almost like a rehearsal. And then uh, once you've kind of worked out the different sections and movements of the song, you mark out each individual channel with little notches on a little bit of tape. So you can kind of know where you're going and these automations end up being real human as a result. There's a couple of things that in that listen, do you want it itself on the tape? At first I thought like the vocal sample maybe it is too loud, but then the first one? Yeah, yeah, but then everything but else then kicks in. Everything else kicks in and made it, it like doesn't that's have to kind do of it. It. it does get you a little bit by surprise. Part of this that I like is yeah, that yeah. it's like the creative choices made in the moment is what happens. Yeah, and we, it's like, we actually can't do it again, so yeah. <laughs> It's Especially jazz. Like it's that, just that jazz. Dip in the bass that we can't explain right at the end. You know? Oh, well, I was going to ask mm. you about that. It sounded like you um, sounded waved like it on pan. the fader a bit, or, or waved it on the fader. Yeah, could have been a jack slip or something. Jack wobble. I think it might have been on the way in to the eight track, but I yeah. can't recall ever hearing it. I can't no. Yeah, I couldn't recall hearing it until the end. Well, and then was was just like, no, nah, I'm into it. Yeah, keep it in. Sometimes also on the final moment. You, you're just grabbing something and you twist it. You don't even know why you've done that, but that ends up in the final take. Yeah. Also, to cut it back early, so you can do a more dubby sort of reverb occasionally. So the reverbs that we had that we were working with were quite amazing because it was a combination of a reverb and a delay at all times. And in the case of our hall reverb, we had a real hall reverb, uh, which was a speaker at one end that basically had two microphones halfway through the hall picking up the echoes of the hall. But the space echo in this case we were using sat at the front of that to sort of make a, you know, a wishy-washy nice dub delay sound and the hall would just smooth it out into this almost ghostly sounding reverb. Yeah, I reckon. Oh, oh it's so beautiful. Yeah. And when you turn the feedback or intensity up on the space echo, uh, shit got real. It's just <laughs> crazy sounds. <laughs> It's great, you can just turn it up and up and up and it never sounds fake. Yeah. yeah. It's, not, it's awesome. <laughs> Try that with your digital reverb. <laughs> well, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> what plugin are you going to use, mate? Uh, Epic Verb, it's free. <laughs> Epic Verb, yeah. I think it's the only one I have. I don't really use plugins. <laughs> She's Epic the Verb to track reverb. Sounds believable. Terrible. Of course, one of the downsides of using a real hall reverb is it's reliant on two microphones picking up, you know, your return of the reverb. So if there happens to be, say, a thunderstorm that rolls in or hail like we we're experiencing, you know, you'd get a, a flash of lightning and you'd just be thinking, oh, God, is that going to come through on the mix? And yeah, we did have a few things that I'm sure in that mix, especially with the rain coming and going. Um, but it was interesting. You just let it play out. You just hear this little sort of... It's like a little ocean. We called it like the, the ambiance ocean. But ultimately it wasn't the sound of the rain that was the problem. It was the humidity from the rain because we had the windows open. It was a hot day and the fresh air blowing in brought with it all kinds of problems. Is the end of the track? Yeah. yeah. Oh, you oh, didn't do oh, the, the tape. Thing. No, the tape stopped. Oh. oh. Oh, no, it's off. It's here. It's on that looping end. We do, we do have a is side. It really, is it where the splice happens? Yeah. That's pretty... So this is a level of real. Oh, there, look. That bit there. Ooh. That's what it is. 
So that must have been the bit that was sitting against the um, pinch roller. So if I chop that bit out. And this is why you find such good engineers in places like analog recording studios, because you have to have an internet connection with understanding the magnetic world and the mechanical world and how everything works and functions, because you do have to line machines up and keep it running and give it maintenance. Every time it was there. something at that point, because otherwise it would have been just guessing. But and then you flick it and the thing would come through. As well. <laughs> like, again, the heads it's so there. humid and hot yeah. today that it's going to be, hey, nailed it. Working. Coming through. Whatever. What, what do you think, producer? <laughs> just pitch one way on the tape. I wouldn't do a like, just do like a one way. Either yeah. speed it up or slow it down. And that's where it is. Are we going? Was that a life save moment? Yeah. Did, did it did it stop yeah. for a second? Yeah, I flicked it and it was off again. <laughs> Actually stopped that time. Uh, it oh. did for a very fraction. I was adding heaps of reverb and I was like, fuck, I don't think I'm hearing that. And then I'm like, I'm not hearing it either. <laughs> so the transition might be a bit weird, but yeah. I was too I was too busy stressing to, <laughs> to hear it. I think we got it. it. No, no we could do much. one or two variations of some of them. Because it, it would be nice if it was all on one reel. Yeah. I have another one, but it's just a pain if your yeah. five track EP is actually spaced over two reels if it doesn't have to be. Yeah, yeah. How much uh, six, though, time six. do you get on a reel? Half an hour. Half an hour. A little bit extra. Yeah. Being yeah. in that environment, you, you kind of really take on board everything everyone else is saying and you learn to commit to a particular pass that you've done based on all the other ears in the room because you you respect those people because we started like reverbing them up and making them a focus the lead line's a little bit behind it it's not the lead line in my mind yeah i yeah. feel like the arps because they come in that's the new thing to focus on yeah yeah uh, but it's your album no <laughs> like i yeah I, it, that was the only thing that stood out that i was like yeah but then when i think about it more it's like actually it's it's good. It's like sure? yeah, yeah. No, they sit. Yeah. The page has been turned. Yeah, we're gonna relabel the desk now. As a solo electronic producer, that's not something that I'm used to experiencing, and it's kind of the closest thing to being in a band that you can kind of get, because um, we're all kind of in there making creative choices, even down to the engineer. <laughs> We, he'd do something and we'd hear it and we'd be like, hey, do that again. We, we want that in the recording. Yeah, that's oh. perfect. Is that all right? That's it perfect. might not be the same again. We'll see. It's never. The fingers crossed. Oh, might be the same. Because it went back to zero properly. All right. On your machine. <laughs> right, let's go for it. Oof. Yeah. yeah. Bang on. It's just a little bit to prove that you did it with tape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The remix actually is something that Alex didn't ask me to do. It came across because I stole his save files once and uh, I was playing a show and I had a tradition of writing a new track for every show that I played. So I thought I'd do a remix and not tell him about it. And Alex asked me to put it on his album, so it must be all right. So working in that studio was really fun because Alex Bennett, the studio owner, was very happy to teach us how to use something and then let us take charge. And it would mean that we could then go in and experiment and really push things. That's yeah, real fun. I can see why Chris does that. Gives <laughs> <laughs> five. Yeah. Good. Cool. That was pretty good, man. Hopefully. I was feeling it. Um, Stopped it on 420 for you. Thank you. <laughs> It's not, as, uh, it's not quite as long as that. Oh, <laughs> Basically, the session was just a whole lot of fun. Like, it was a bunch of mates hanging out, playing with sounds, and 
The whole concept to begin with was actually one that was really ridiculous. I knew it was ridiculous, but I wanted to do it anyway. A lot of the music I make is really silly on purpose. And I didn't really realize what impact the environment that I'd put myself in would actually have on the end result of the tracks. We got quite lucky with the recording of this release because we had the Game Boys, which have got such a raw sound about how they produce sound. It's, it's gaming hardware for kids, basically, you know? And you mix that with the analog side of things, which is so smoothing, and you're sending things like those super sharp, rich square waves into a reverb hall, which is taking all those harmonics and smooshing it around in a chaotic, natural kind of way. So you've got nature and chaos and analog circuitry on one side with super, dirty digital on the other and the two come together in a, a very harmonious way it's almost like they they nod at each other it's like this side goes yeah I, I can fix you up and this side sort of like yeah deal with this you know so i've been thinking about this and i mean when i listen to and when i compose music i tend to think of sounds as physical objects there's something real there and i just visualize them like that and so to be in this analog studio where everything is physical you can really feel like you're getting your hands in and moving those objects around with the sends on the mixer and the faders it just it really feels real like if there's one thing to take away from this it's use your ears use other people's ears don't think about what gear you're using or what plugin that you should put on it's just like forget everything else around it and just listen and if it sounds cool and your friend thinks it sounds cool you end up with something that's pretty cool <laughs> So that's how you're going to end the documentary. <laughs>